hey everyone uh, it's been a long time since i have uploaded a video and i apologize for that so let's get back to the new lesson so in this lesson today we are going to learn about electron transport chain so before i talk about electron transport chain i would first like to give you an overview of cellular respiration so cellular respiration can be broken down into four different stages in the first stage which is the glycolysis so as the name suggests glycol means uh, glucose and lysis means breaking it down so glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate and in the process it, it generates this two uh, nadh now the second stage is the oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate to coenzyme a so the pyruvate is oxidized into acetyl coenzyme a in the process it also generates NADH and now the third stage is the oxidation of acetyl coenzyme A to carbon dioxide. So in this process uh, acetyl coenzyme A is oxidized into carbon dioxide through tricarboxylic acid cycle or Krebs cycle and the electrons which are liberated through this process those are passed on to the coenzymes that is NAD, NAD and FAD and uh, these coenzymes are then reduced to NADH and FADH2. Now the final stage is the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation where NADH and FADH2 give up their electrons to electron transport chain and through that process ATP is synthesized or produced. So these are the four stages of cellular respiration and uh, it is important, it is also important to know the location of each of these stages. So basically glycolysis takes place in the cytosol uh, and pyruvate is oxidized to acetyl coenzyme A in the mitochondrial matrix where, uh, as well as the oxidation of acetyl coenzyme A to carbon dioxide also takes place in the mitochondrial matrix and the last stage which is the uh, electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation that takes place in the inner, inner membrane of the mitochondria. Now, uh, I just want to clarify one thing that in my previous video, I have mentioned that the cellular respiration is broken down into three different stages. That is just because I combine the first stage and the second stage. That's why I mention as three different stages, but I broken it down into one. Uh, I, I broken down and divided that further into four stages. So I just wanted to clarify that with you so that you don't have any confusion. Now, when we learn about electron transport chain, it is important to know that how the electrons are carried through electron transport chain and uh, oxidative phosphorylation. So there are three types of electron transfer takes place uh, in oxidative phosphorylation. First, uh, there is a direct transfer of electrons as in the form of reduced ferric ion to ferrous ion. So when the electrons are passed on to uh, ferric ion, it is then reduced to ferrous ion. And electrons can be also transferred hydrogen atom, that is hydrogen atom, uh, one hydrogen atom and uh, one electron. And it can also be transferred as a hydride ion, which bears two electrons. So this is something I thought uh, uh, it is important to know. And lastly, I also quickly want to talk about the structure of mitochondria, which is important before we start learning about the electron transport chain. So mitochondria has an outer membrane and this outer membrane contains a special pores which making it freely permeable to most ions uh, and small molecules. So this is the outer membrane and there is this inner membrane which is a specialized stru structure that is impermeable to most small ions including uh, hydrogen, sodium, potassium, as well as most small molecules such as ATP, ADP, pyruvate and other metabolites. And the inner membrane is unusually rich in proteins and half of which is directly involved in uh, electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. So you can see that all the enzymes involved uh, in electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation that are located uh, or uh, embedded into the inner membrane space, uh, inner, inner membrane of the mitochondria. And Another important thing to uh, know about inner, mitochondrial, uh, inner membrane of the mitochondria that it is extensively folded and this extensive folding is called cristae and uh, this is important to increase the surface area of the membrane. 
Now next is the intermembrane space, which is just the space between the inner membrane and the outer membrane. And last is the mitochondrial matrix, which is the space inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. Uh, and it also contains most of the enzymes which are involved in uh, TCA cycle as well as uh, the enzymes involved in fatty acid oxidation. So this is the structure of mitochondria and now let's start uh, talking about the electron transport chain. So the first enzyme in electron transport chain is uh, NADH dehydrogenase and it is also called as complex 1. Now, uh, complex 1 or NADH dehydrogenase is L-shaped enzyme and with and, and it is a transmembrane protein with one arm embedded in the inner membrane and the other, uh, other arm extending into the mitochondrial matrix. Now, it contains a molecule of coenzyme which is flavin mononucleotide. So, complex 1 is tightly bound to coenzyme FMN. And it also contains iron atom which is also paired with sulfur atom to form the iron sulfur centers. And most importantly, it transfers electrons from NADH to coenzyme Q. And now we are going to learn about how uh, the electron transfer uh, takes place through complex 1 to coenzyme Q. So I would like to remind you again that acetyl coenzyme A is oxidized into carbon dioxide through uh, TCA cycle. And during the process, the electrons which are liberated, they are passed on to coenzymes. And these coenzymes are then reduced to NADH and FADH2. So the electrons are actually carried by NADH and FADH2. So you know that where the electrons are coming, uh, where the electrons are coming from. So in the first step, the free proton uh, and the hydride ion are carried by NADH are uh, first transferred to complex one of NADH <coughs> dehydrogenase enzyme. And the electrons from the NADH are first transferred to the tightly bound FMN coenzyme. And when the electrons are transferred to FMN, uh, FMN is then reduced to FMNH2. And during the process, NADH is also oxidized to NAD+. Now, I also mentioned that complex 1 also contains um, iron sulfur centers. So the electrons, so in the second step, the electrons from FMNH2 are then transferred to iron sulfur, series of iron sulfur centers. And now in the last step, which is the third step, the electrons from the iron sulfur centers are then transferred to coenzyme Q. And when the electrons are transferred to coenzyme Q, coenzyme Q is reduced to QH2. And as a result, um, FMNH2 is then oxidized and converted back into FMN. So basically what complex 1 does is it actually transfers the electrons from NADH to FMNH2 and through iron sulfur center it is then transferred to coenzyme Q and reduce the coenzyme Q to QH2. So now the electrons are with coenzyme Q. Now I also want to mention some important things about coenzyme Q and coenzyme Q, first thing coenzyme Q is also known as ubiquinone and uh, keep in mind that coenzyme Q is a mobile electron carrier. Basically what it does is it actually moves to complex one, picks up the electrons and then transfer to the next member of the electron transport chain. And remember that electrons have a negative charge and on their own they cannot move along the inner membrane. And the membrane is actually made up of phospholipid and the tails of the phospho phospholipid are non-polar and they don't interact well with negatively charged electrons. So basically the electron has to be carried by a mobile electron carrier. So in short, it is important to know that coenzyme Q is a mobile electron carrier uh, which is embedded uh, in the inner membrane uh, opposed to the complex one which is an integral protein uh, located in the inner membrane. Now the other important thing to learn about complex one is when the electrons are passing through complex one it becomes supercharged and the enzyme doesn't like to be supercharged so what it is going to do is it is going to pass its electrons to coenzyme Q. So when the electrons move through complex one they liberate some energy and which causes the conformational change in complex one. As a result, complex 1 acts as a proton pump and transports 
four proton across the inner mitochondrial membrane. That is, the protons are transferred from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So this is something important to know that when the electrons are passing through complex one, it is liberating energy which causes the conformational change in complex one, which uh, makes the complex one acts as a proton pump. As a result, complex one is going to transport electrons from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space. So some important thing about complex one is it oxidizes NADH into NAD plus and reduces coenzyme Q to QH2. Therefore, complex one also called as NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase. Uh, and another important thing is it is able to pump protons across the inner membrane that is from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space of mitochondria. Now let's talk about complex two, which is succinate dehydrogenase. As it is titled, it is known as succinate dehydrogenase, and it is the only ATCA cycle enzyme in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So let me remind you uh, that when acetyl coenzyme A is oxidized uh, to carbon dioxide, one of the step uh, of TCA cycle is to convert succinate into fumarate. And during this process, uh, FAD is reduced to FADH2. So the electrons from FADH2 are then transferred to complex 2 and then we will see how the electrons are then carried through complex 2 to coenzyme Q. So basically this is the only TCA cycle enzyme which is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane as opposed to what we just learned that majority of the TCA cycle enzymes are located in the mitochondrial matrix. Now it also contains iron sulfur centers or iron sulfur protein and importantly it transfer electrons from FADH2 to coenzyme Q therefore it is also known as succinate uh, coenzyme Q reductase complex because it reduces coenzyme Q. So now let's learn how the electrons are transferred through complex 2. So basically we just learned that uh, in TCA cycle succinate dehydrogenase or complex 2 enzyme convert uh, uh, succinate to fumarate and during the process FAD is reduced to FADH2. So now the electrons are with FADH2 and the electrons from FADH2 are then transferred to again series of iron sulfur centers and electrons from iron sulfur centers are then subsequently transferred to coenzyme Q which then reduces coenzyme Q to QH2 and as a result FADH2 is then oxidized and converted back to FAD. So basically here we have electrons uh, from uh, the reaction where succinate is converted into fumarate and it is then uh, transferred onto FAD and from FAD it is then transferred to iron sulfur center and eventually to coenzyme Q which reduces coenzyme Q to QH2. And this is the electrons from NADH, which is also transferred to coenzyme Q. So basically both complex one and complex two transfer their electrons to coenzyme Q, or in other words, coenzyme Q accepts electrons from both complex one and complex two, which is important to know. Now, the another important difference between complex one and complex two is when the electrons are passing through complex one, the energy which is liberated by passing through electrons is very small and which is not sufficient enough to cause the conformational change in complex two to act as a proton pump. Hence, it does not pump proton across the inner membrane and does not contribute to transport of uh, or it does not contribute to transfer of protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane. Again, uh, the complex one does not pump protons and complex two because it reduces coenzyme Q, it is also known as succinate Q reductase complex. So now let's talk about complex three, which is also known as cytochrome BC1 complex and is actually a dimer and each monomer consists of three proteins. So first is cytochrome B, which contains two heme groups, and second is cytochrome C1, which contains one heme group, and lastly is the risky protein, which contains two iron sulfur, uh, two iron and two sulfur groups. 
Now, the important thing about cytochrome BC1 complex is it transfers electrons from reduced coenzyme Q, that is reduced QH2, to cytochrome C via complex 3. And this electron transfer is achieved via a unique redox pathway, which is called the Q cycle. And I will have a separate video on Q cycle if anybody is interested to learn that mechanism uh, in detail. And complex 3, also known as ubiquinone cytochrome C oxidase because it oxidizes cyto uh, coenzyme Q or ubiquinone and reduces uh, cytochrome C. So therefore, it is called as ubiquinone cytochrome C oxidoreductase. So at this stage, the electrons are with uh, coenzyme Q in the form of reduced QH2. So the electrons from QH2 are first passed on to the Fe plus 3 of complex 3, which is the ferric ion. And once the electrons are passed on to ferric ion, it is then reduced to ferrous ion, that is uh, in Fe plus 2. As a result, reduced QH2 is then oxidized and converted back into coenzyme Q. One important thing to remember that from here, all the complexes are going to be cytochrome complexes, and they contain this iron um, and they contain this iron atom in the center of the porphyrin ring. So this is the porphyrin ring which contains these pyrroles, and this iron atom uh, in the center of the porphyrin ring that shuttles between the ferric ion uh, to the ferrous ion state which is common in all the cytochrome complexes we are going to talk about uh, from here. And also remember that anytime you have a loss of electrons, uh, oxidation occurs, and uh, if there is a gain of electrons, reduction occurs. So in this case, um, QH2 loses its electron, so oxidation occurs because it is oxidized to, oxidized to coenzyme Q whereas uh, Fe plus 3 or ferric ion, it gains electrons, so it actually reduced to Fe plus 2 or ferrous ion. So anytime there is a loss of electron, oxidation occurs, and the, if there is a gain of electrons, reduction occurs. That is something important to remember. Now from here, uh, the electrons which are now with uh, ferrous ion, that is Fe plus 2, are then transferred onto cytochrome C, uh, or are then transferred onto Fe plus 3 of cytochrome C, which is then reduce the Fe plus 3 into Fe plus 2 of ferrous ion. As a result, the ferrous ion on complex 3 is then oxidized and converted back into Fe plus 3. And most importantly, when the electrons are transferred through complex 3, it becomes supercharged and therefore it causes the conformational change in complex 3 3 to act as a proton pump and therefore complex 3 also transport a 4 proton across the inner membrane that is from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space. So basically complex 3 pumps protons across the inner membrane and because it oxidizes ubiquinone and reduces cytochrome C it is also known as ubiquinone cytochrome C oxidoreductase. Now, one important thing about cytochrome C is just like coenzyme Q, it is also a mobile electron carrier, but it's a surface protein as opposed to coenzyme Q, which is an integral protein. And also remember that it is loosely associated to the cytosolic side of the inner membrane towards the intermembrane space. It is loosely attached. That's why it can. it is actually a mobile protein so that it can move from one complex to other and carries electrons. Now next is the complex four, which is called as cytochrome C oxidase. Uh, it carries electrons from cytochrome C to molecular oxygen. It also contains copper ions, that is copper A, copper B, and two heme groups, heme A and heme A3. Now at this stage, the electrons are with reduced Fe plus two of cytochrome C. And from here, they are uh, then transferred to Fe plus 3 of complex 4, which then reduces Fe plus 3 into Fe plus 2. And as a result, Fe, reduced Fe plus 2 is oxidized and converted back into Fe plus 3. Now, the electrons from uh, Fe plus 2 of complex 4 is then finally uh, Transfer to the oxygen atom uh, in the mitochondrial matrix and once the electrons are transferred to oxygen, oxygen is then reduced to form water in the mitochondrial matrix.
as well as it also oxidizes Fe plus 2 and convert it uh, back to Fe plus 3. Now when the electrons are transferred to complex 4, it is again supercharged and causes the conformational change in complex 4, making it act as a proton pump to transport uh, four protons across the uh, inner membrane space that means from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space and this is also the reaction of uh, um, reduction of uh, oxygen which forms the water so you have oxygen then two protons two electrons which then forms the water in the mitochondrial matrix so the electrons from uh, so the electrons from cytochrome C are then passed through complex 4 and finally to the oxygen and reduces oxygen to water. Now the other important thing to know is there are many electron acceptors. NAD and uh, FAD are the electron acceptors but oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. And also, it is important to remember that oxygen is the most electronegative element and it has a high affinity for electron. So because of the that high affinity for the electrons, oxygen basically pulls electron through electron transport chain towards itself. So that's actually the driving force here, which is the electronegativity of the oxygen atom. And electrons have a tendency to travel from atom which are less electronegative uh, to the atom which are more electronegative. So when the electrons are traveling from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4 that means complex 1 is the least electronegative whereas oxygen is the highly electronegative molecule. And you can also think as oxygen as a magnet which is actually trying to pull the electrons from uh, from complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4 so so that's how it is actually uh, forces electrons towards itself through electron transport chain now lastly I just want to quickly review the process of electron transport chain so the electrons which are carried by NADH it is then transferred through complex 1 to co coenzyme Q to complex 3 to cytochrome C to complex 4 and finally to oxygen. So now you can see that as the electron moved from these complexes uh, and finally to oxygen you can you can imagine oxygen as a, a magnet which is pulling the electrons towards itself and once the electrons are um, with oxygen it is oxygen is then reduces into uh, reduces and form water into the mitochondrial matrix. And so as the electrons from complex 2 is then traveling through com coenzyme Q to complex 3 to cytochrome C to complex 4 to finally to oxygen. Now when the electrons are traveling through different complexes, as I mentioned that the passing of this electron through complex 1 to complex 3 to complex 4, they actually liberate the energy and causes the conformational change in complex 1, complex 3 and complex 4 which then acts as a proton pump to transport protons across the inner membrane from the mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space. So at one point there's going to be more protons in the intermembrane space compared to the mitochondrial matrix and, and this uh, pumping out protons from mitochondrial matrix to intermembrane space is uh, eventually creates a proton gradient. So basically proton gradient is when uh, occurs when the more electrons are pumped out from the mitochondrial matrix into the intermembrane space. And this proton gradient uh, eventually creates this uh, pH gradient and an electric, uh, electrical gradient. So the electrical gradient creates more positive charge on the outside of the um, membrane or into the intermembrane space whereas uh, the mitochondrial matrix becomes more negative because there are very less protons left in the mitochondrial matrix compared to the intermembrane space and the pH gradient lowers the pH of the intermembrane space that is it is making the intermembrane space more acidic whereas the mitochondrial matrix become uh, mitochondrial matrix has high pH and makes it more alkaline. So basically proton gradient creates this high energy and uneven distribution of protons uh, 
across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And furthermore, both this proton gradient and the electrical gradient tend to attract these protons back into the mitochondrial matrix from the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. So electrons are then traveling back into the mitochondrial matrix through a special enzyme which is called ATP synthase, which is also called as complex 5. So basically the flow of this proton down the electrochemical gradient into the mitochondrial matrix drives the synthesis of ATP uh, with the help of ATP synthase enzyme. And this phenomena of synthesizing ATP uh, through proton gradient is called Michel's chemiosmotic hypothesis. So how does the proton gradient synthesizes ATP through ATP synthase enzyme or complex phi enzyme? That is the topic of my next video, uh, which I'm not going to cover uh, in this lesson. So thank you so much for watching guys and I hope you really uh, learned something from this video of electron transport chain and I promise that I will see you soon with my next video of uh, electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation where we will learn how the ATP is synthesized through uh, ATP synthase or the complex phi uh, enzyme. Uh, thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to like, share and subscribe the channel and I will see you soon next time.